Now we've closed ZBrush once um, since our last lesson, so we are going to have to reload the uh, tool that we saved uh, from uh, the last video. So we will just go and uh, find that. Now the um, the tools that we save in um, ZBrush aren't saved into scenes the way that they are in um, uh, in Maya they are actually saved um, as tools that need to be um, reloaded and redrawn onto the canvas. Um, since last lesson I've um, I saved a a new version of our tool with the uh, with a, a, a suffix of B and that's um, just because the the one that we saved during the lesson didn't have the smoothing that we had performed so um, I had just repeated the um, the save as function that um, that I showed you during that lesson so with that uh, tool now loaded I'm going to draw it back out onto the canvas and go up to edit mode and you'll notice that we are at the lower subdivision level that's because that's how where we um, saved our tool so we'll just bump that up to um, subdivision level 3 now um, to begin sculpting I'll just make sure that we have the um, 3D layer that we created last time selected um, just so that we can keep all of our additional uh, sculpting on new layers and um, uh, tone them down or erase them or mix and match them as we see fit. Uh, now the first thing that I um, want to sculpt into this um, are a couple of ridges along the edges here. Uh, the reason for this is that um, this static mesh is designed to um, uh, to be tiled um, as in we're going to have a few of these static meshes uh, lined up um, uh, next to each other and the normal map that we are going to be generating isn't going to flow across these um, these static meshes properly and uh, as a result we're going to have a noticeable line here in the um, uh, in the the normal map and uh, if we um, if we can't get rid of it, we'll make it look like um, that was always our intention. And so what we're going to do is uh, put ridges down the side here, so that it it sort of has a bump that goes into this, um, uh, so that it it uh, it comes along and has a bump which goes into this edge, which looks like this edge is actually sort of um, uh, like this is where the the mesh tucks in to the edge of the wall here so the first thing that I'm going to do is switch off perspective and I'm uh, holding um, control actually first I'll just make sure that that's the only um, uh, group that we have uh, visible um, with control and shift and now holding control to go into masking I'm just going to select those two uh, rows there um, and then I'm going to select these two rows here now if we uh, bring back the rest of our object and invert our mask you can see that we have a um, uh, a row of polygons there that are unmasked um, but it, but the unmasking also comes over into this area here, these these flat edges, and we'd like to keep these as flat as possible. Um, during our sculpting, it's inevitable that we will sort of affect these edges eventually, but we we just want to keep that to a minimum. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, hide that middle group there, and I'll draw a mask around the the whole object with only those groups visible and then bring that back and you can see that we've effectively masked, um, masked off the areas that we don't want affected and we only have these um, edges here um, uh, that are unmasked and they're only partially unmasked 
Now what I could do is I could, with the standard brush, um, I could sort of go in here and just sort of sculpt uh, ridges here. Uh, obviously that's sort of too much. We can bring down the intensity. As I said before, I'm using a mouse. And so we can sort of uh, form these sort of nice uh, ridges here. And because we're doing a very sort of biological looking um, mesh here, um, this is going to be a sort of uh, an almost Giga-esque um, type um, hive design. Um, but uh, bec because we're sort of doing that sort of biological or biomechanical design, uh, we could get away with that. That that would probably actually be um, be ideal for our purposes. But um, if you were doing a mesh that was perhaps um, slightly less biological um, or sort of um, more manufactured looking, uh, what we could do is actually um, go down to our deformation and we'll go to the inflate deformer and just boost that up to 100 and 100 again. And there you can see that we have this nice even sort of um, ridge generated there. And uh, if we um, remove our mask, we can see that we have those those sorts of ridges. Now these, these look sort of very sharp here because we've only got like uh, two polys um, uh, width. Uh, so there's one uh, row of points here which is defining the um, the um, the edge of our ridge uh, but uh, we will be of course dividing um, this mesh again and um, uh, and we'll be dividing with uh, smooth and once we divide with smooth you can see that it's going to actually smooth out to this so, so sort of nice rounded rib like shape and the ribs will um, give us the impression that this is um, almost like the inside of some creature or some sort of uh, biological construction that it was sort of um, extruded in some sort of hive type manufacturing process and to put the perspective back on um, and so um, so there we go uh, I will undo that um, last subdivision will will be um, We'll be applying that later on, but uh, but for now we're just sort of uh, applying um, rough um, uh, the the rough details of of what we're going to um, going to be um, setting up. For the finer details, um, we're going to uh, work at higher subdivision levels. But uh, for now, we're we're um, we're just using this sort of this level of detail. Now I want to um, put some um, some ridges here as well. That's an example of me forgetting what key to press. Um, I'll just try that again. So I'll just um, get rid of those and just find the center point by um, because of our X symmetry we can see what we've got there. I'll just switch on frame that'll help as well. And so if I switch on the mask I can put a mask down there and then see how quickly I can work um, without running out of time um, so we reverse the mask hide that mask that section bring that section back and go to inflate, inflate it twice, and then that section mask it. I'm going to run out of time, aren't I? Um, well. You can see what I'm uh, I'm doing here. I'll I'll continue this in the next video.